here we have opportunity to see uh, two three minutes preparation before exhibition starts and because these kids are very young I need to explain to them and actually the first first move I spend in a room with them no, no, see, see, three. Can we push right this time? Yes. Because, well, we will see all five of them. They sit on one huge table. And referee is going around the table, making the move. And now I. It's probably basically better that you are behind the players. That you are behind the players. But now go to the second board. You can end it. You know? It's better for you. Hmm? Oh, 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 okay. Oh, okay. No, no, okay. And as you can see, they are still a little bit confused. <laughs> What's actually going to happen? Now, play first and then write. Then I leave. Okay, pawn, c4, cat4. Okay, now I'm going, I'm going into my place. Yes, all right. <laughs> Here we see the graphic example of a regular continuous blindfold chess simultaneous exhibition. As I mentioned earlier, regulars mean no chess clock involved at all. Continuous, as I mentioned earlier, is going from board number one board number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. When eight is finished, we are moving again to board number one and we are circling until end of the exhibition. Here we see this is the referee position of helper. He is making my moves on each of eight boards and he is telling me what opponents play. And also, when I mentioned, as I mentioned earlier, referee is writing score sheets to be sure especially if some problem occur about uh, moves because it's very important to understand each of the moves everything must be very clearly understood this uh, is performer that's me and between referee and me is kind of the wall or barrier that basically I cannot see any of Hello, uh, we are uh, now in the conference room on a conference table and I posted three chessboard for better explanation how the process of playing is going for regular continuous blindfold chess simultaneous. Let's say I'm white on all three boards and the referee it's making my move. I'm telling you him what to do and e2, e4 pawns and he wrote down on the paper my move. Then referee is moving to the second board and I'm telling him what I want to play. It's a different move. Pawn d2, d4 and referee writing down. Okay. Referee is moving, moving now on the third board and waiting for my answer. And I can choose different move. Any move. Okay, and this case is pawn from C2 to C4. Referee is obligated to writing down these moves and then he moves on a board number one. When he is in the front, we can, we can imagine that the three chairs are actually opponents or participants. And the referee is back to the guy number one, the board number one. We are waiting for him to make a move. When he answered, the referee writing down move C7, C5 and telling me what is the move that opponents play? And he is still on the same place. Referee doesn't move. Because I am on a move. It's my move. 
And then, after a certain period of time of thinking, I can say to him, Knight G1 F3, he's writing down, he's making move, and he is moving on board number two. When he is in the front of the second player, he's waiting on his answer. Uh, uh, answer. And when he finally makes the moves, he's telling me, Knight G8 F6. In the same time, he's writing move down on the paper. Writing move is very important to follow up any kind of the problem in the case of the miscommunication in the future. And then he's still waiting and before the second board for my answer. And if I tell him pawn c2, c4, he's making move, referee is making move, writing down move and move to the board number three. Stay on the repeat or over again. Opponent is playing, make the moves. He referee is writing down moves. SG8 F6 and wait for my answer. I can answer this one. S knight G1 F3. And when last board is finished, he is moving again on the board number one. Now he is waiting for opponents to make his second move and then he decide pawn d7 d6. He is telling me the move and write it down move on the paper. And then I answer okay. And until that circulation is going to go all the time until exhibition will be finished. And don't forget this example that I show right now we call officially regular continuous blindfold chess simultaneous on three boards. Thank you. Oh well, what we have now on the screen looks the same like diagram before, but difference. Involved the time, one chess clock. And because of that, we called that performance handicap continuous blindfold chess simultaneous exhibition. This type of exhibition involves one person more to be involved in the game and this is time controller. Put time controller and one chess clock. It's going the same way like regular continuous blindfold chess simultaneous. It's only difference that it's actually much tougher to play because usually when I play this on uh, eight boards we set up the time on a two o'clock for me and two o'clock for all of them which means that each of them have beside that they see the board and everything else and pieces I'm blindfolded and I have eight time less time for each of them and must be understood just the simple rules of the natural law. I have eight times less time to think of for each board. And now I will explain you in a conference room on this three board what's actually it's going on. Well, as we will see, I will use the very famous German clock Gardet and in the last century all world championship almost play with this clock including the famous match Fischer Spassky in 1972 I will now place the clock on a proper place well when we see the guy clock here the third person sitting here is a referee additional which takes care only about time and now the plane is going on this way. Let's just start for example from the beginning. And when exhibition starts, referee click my time. My time is going. Then I said for the first move, 
The same is repeat like before. E2, E4. But referee is moving on the second board. Still my time is going. Now I tell the move, referee writing down and move to the last board. He wait for my answer. I'm telling you my move. Referee is writing down C2, C4. And then at that moment, referee for the time control guy clicks the clock. And time start to go for the other guys. And this is how the cycle is going on. After a certain thinking, he make move. And in the same time, referee that's still going on. In the same time, he write down C7, C5, and in the same time, referee pressing my clock because I'm on a move. And at the certain period of time, I make my decision, knight F1, F3. At that point, referee click the clock. Now we see a routine how system's going because handicap continuous blindfold chess simultaneous. Now this clock is running which belongs to my opponent. This clock is mine. This clock belongs to all three of my opponents. When he makes the move, he decides knight g8 f6, referee write knight g8 f6, and the other referee is pressing the clock. Now I think What's going to be my second move? And when I make move and tell the move, referee is pressing the clock again for the opponents. First referee is writing move C to C4. Likely in the same time that this referee pressed the clock. Of course, we have this little uh, unsynchronization, but that's not so big deal. More or less, we are in a, we are in a good shape. And then this guy is thinking. And the good things about that, one of the guy can go in the bathroom forever or disappear half an hour because they will lose the time. And if position is bad, they start to be nervous and force the guy to play the move. This guy is very, very, very slow. They will force the guy. That's good things what's happened sometimes. The op his companeros will force the guy just to, you know, to lose the game and because they will lose anyway. The point, if he is too slow, they will all lose on the time. And it's no time, no time to relax. Playing with the clock, even one clock, it's a big difference than playing regular, continuous blindfold chess. And he make moves. Clocks is going on my way. My way now I'm on a move and the referee in the same time writing down. Knight f8 f6. I'm thinking, I make my move, and that's referee. Heard my move, he pressed the clock. Other guys writing in the same time, knight g1 f3, and finally from third board, he's moving on first board. And again, the routine is repeating. The guy answered this move, and the referee pressed at the same time this clock. And other referee is writing the move pawn d7, d6. And that's going on until the end of the game. As you can see, in a three, if I play with the three boards, technically I have three times, three times less time for taking than each of these players. And that's, I believe, is clear explanation about what are the differences between a regular simultaneous or and handicap simultaneous? Wow! Now we are in the beginning when hell start. As you can read, that's the handicap random blindfold chess simultaneous exhibition. As we know, handicap because of the clock random. It means random. It's not continuous. It's opposite of random. Random. It means that. 
each of the helper we have on this example on this graph eight boards and eight clocks and eight helpers and referee is actually only here to supervise what's going on like in a big restaurant because it's very messy as the traffic between all, each of eight helpers and performer two performer and back to the to the chair is very frequent and the silence must be almost perfect and when I explained earlier in the case of Gary Kasparov who play on uh, 10 boards handicap random simultaneous when opponents play the move the helper must write only that move and bring to me to performer to see what's going on what he played and leave the piece of paper and wait for my answer that's it he's waiting and the order must be almost perfect perfect silence because sometimes all eight people can be in front of you and wait for your answer that means anytime the opponents wants to answer he can answer and you are playing in the same time and eight different board which mean that you have eight times less for thinking on the beginning of exhibition and the bad time is that besides remembering all these images you must remember eight by two you must remember 16 clock on which you have more time less time and so so on and so on and in my in my practice i play almost the most the number of the six of handicap random blindfold the more likely because it was difficult for me to find out the helpers it's not easy and sometimes if it's the friendly game actually the opponents can perform helping position as well but to be honest with you rarely I only I only recall that I and Gary Kasparov play this type of blindfold blindfold chess simultaneous. Thank you for your patience and understanding. Sometimes I used to play here and I used to sit on this chair or or this one and over there is the glass with the entrance in a place for playing and sometimes I play here with six games in the same time because we use actually smaller chessboard today tonight I just use a big one for hoping for a better explanation and thank you very much for understanding here we are Massachusetts Institute of Technology Hi folks, I hope uh, that you enjoyed my movie about uh, blindfold chess and uh, I hope that I will continue next time and make blindfold chess advanced movie in, in which I will focus mostly on hemicamp random chess and as well as the techniques of the trading I mean, on the techniques of the training, how uh, from the beginning until you reach the higher level of uh, imaging memorization. Thank you very much for watching my movie and see you again. Thank you, bye bye.
if somebody wants me to contact me via email, I will give you two emails. And first one is tesla at lowboss.com. Second email is rectum at gmail.com. If somebody of you are interested to get more information, you can feel free to contact me on either of those emails and I will provide you much more information than of this movie tonight. Thank you very much and good night for everybody.